The RBI governor just concluded this speech for uh, the February Monetary Policy Committee meeting announcement. Uh, remember that uh, this is now the sixth consecutive policy uh, where the RBI and the MPC have maintained uh, the uh, benchmark repo rate at 6.5% as well as the stance, the regulatory stance uh, at withdrawal of accommodation. Uh, both of these have reasons behind that and that's something that the RBI governor used this policy to explain. Uh, firstly, uh, on any kind of rate cut, now of course the RBI does not give any clarity, uh, the MPC does not give any clarity on what they are going to do in the future, uh, but they do give some hints and those hints are very clear during the speech. Uh, the first issue that the RBI is tackling, uh, that the RBI governor tackled in his speech uh, were the fact, was the fact that uh, there, is going, there is still incomplete transmission of the 250 uh, basis points worth of rate hikes that the RBI has done uh, over the last year, year and a half. Uh, that has not yet moved on to the broader credit market. Now, that's something that the RBI governor specified. Uh, the second point is that inflation continues to remain above uh, the 4% target and the RBI's job is not yet done. These are the words that the RBI governor used. Uh, so that will give you an indication that till that job is done, you cannot expect any kind of monetary easing or any kind of change um, in stance. So unless you fix the transmission of interest rates as well as bring inflation down uh, to the acceptable 4% mark, uh, you will not see any kind of movement on the interest rates. That's likely what is going to happen. Uh, important to note what the RBI's trajectory of inflation is uh, going ahead. So for FI24, uh, the RBI is estimating inflation to be uh, CPI to be around 5.4% uh, uh, with Q4 at 5%. So we are still away from that 4% target. Then comes FI25 and the estimation there, there uh, inflation hits 4% only around September and then again uh, the following six months of the next fiscal uh, it will go up again uh, to about 4.5-4.7%. Uh, so once again you will see that inflation is still seeing some amount of uh, volatility. Uh, the RBI governor was specific to, main, uh, to mention uh, that food price volatility continues to worry the RBI and they need to find um, ways to destabilize any kind of generalization of food price inflation and, and the effect that will have on the headline inflation number. Uh, on the growth front, the RBI is very, very clear that the momentum that we saw in FI24, the strong growth momentum uh, that we've seen in FI24 uh, will continue in FI25 uh, with FI25 growth to be, uh, GDP growth is estimated to be about 7%. Uh, that will now be the fourth consecutive year if uh, uh, the actual growth meets those estimates. That will be the fourth consecutive year where a growth has remained above 7% or 7% or above. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the other important bit. On the liquidity front, now that was something that we were closely watching out for because uh, in the December policy, the RBI governor did mention that inflation has uh, sort of tightened faster than what they had estimated. But since then, things have started to improve. Uh, the RBI governor mentioned uh, that uh, from the second fortnight of January uh, as well as in February you are seeing uh, uh, the government spending picking up and that is sort of uh, in ensuring that system liquidity does continue to remain in surplus. The potential banking sector liquidity is in surplus. The RBI said that they are uh, completely ready uh, with two-way operations which is to infuse as well as absorb excess liquidity whenever necessary uh, and that they will keep a keen eye on where uh, the liquidity moves on from here. Uh, the last bit which uh, to my mind uh, is very very important uh, is announcements regarding to the key fact statements uh, as far as uh, lending is concerned. So so far uh, digital lenders had to maintain a key fact statement that they give to the customers which explains all the charges involved with a retail loan. So now uh, the RBI has extending that requirement to all banks and MBFCs for all retail and MSME loans. That will increase the compliance costs for banks, uh, but of course improve transparency in the lending system. The second bit uh, is on CBDC, where the RBI governor said that the RBI has proposed to introduce additional programmability uh, on CBDC something a little bit more interesting to watch out for because what does additional programmability mean? It ensures that the money that is given to somebody in the form of CBDC can only be used for specifically defined purposes and not for anything else. Now, if the intention is to make CBDC the equivalent of paper currency, then additional programmability comes uh, sort of in opposition uh, to that proposition. So we need to ha see how exactly the RBI intends to bring in additional programmability without affecting uh, the fungibility factor of currency. So these were some of the key highlights of the RBI governor's uh, speech. Uh, of course, a little later there will be a press conference where the RBI governor will field questions from reporters. We'll try and get a little bit more clarity from him.